Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. For any type of photography, two things are essential, camera and lens. Astrophotography is no exception. Several months ago, I talked about how to choose a camera. And today, let's talk about the most exciting thing in this hobby, choosing a telescope for astrophotography. For amateur astronomers like us, Buying a telescope is like buying a house, because it will be the host of our curiosities, ambitions, explorations, and dreams. Thus, telescope is a huge market, and there are so many guided to your first telescope type of thing, they all go through refractors, Newtonians, and then Schmidt Cassegrains, etc. But I am going to take a different approach here. I'll put all types of telescopes together and discuss only four factors. Focal length, focal ratio, central obstruction, and last but not least, cost, weight, and image quality. Just like buying a camera lens, first question is always, how long is the focal lens? How to answer that? Find out which objects you are going to shoot. Landscapes, flowers, insects, or people, etc. And that's exactly the same for choosing a telescope for astrophotography. So, let's start with the targets we want to shoot. For celestial objects, I prefer to divide them into three big categories. Nebulae, galaxies, and planets. Most nebulae's size are more than half a degree, and they usually sprawl out into the space. So, a focal length of 300 to 600 mm is pretty much ideal. If you have a full frame camera, you should go more towards 600 mm. And if you have a 4 thirds inch or APS C format camera, 300 to 400 mm focal length will fit better. Of course, 300 mm with a full frame camera can still get you some great shots, but I would say the targets are pretty limited. If you are interested in nebulae, M31 and M33 will be a bonus for you. Both are galaxies, but both are huge. For other galaxies, most of them are sized 10 arcmin or less. A focal length of 1000 to 2000 mm will be nice. If you are dedicated to planets and planetary nebulae, a focal length of over 3000 mm is essential, but since the target is small and bright, you can probably use a Barlow lens to achieve that. But still, you need at least 1000 mm to start with. By the way, your target also affects the selection of your camera and how you shoot them. If you live close to a city and have a backyard, doing narrowband astrophotography for nebulae is a good choice which means you must have a monochrome camera, and then you can do astrophotography for almost every single clear night. But for galaxies, you have no choice but to do LRGB or use color camera and go to dark sites. Planets are the most flexible. You can do it anywhere with any camera. Of course, most telescopes can be used with a focal reducer or extender. Sometimes they can change the telescope's focal lens quite a bit, but I would only recommend those with a flattener in their names or those claim they maintain the same flat field performance as the native optical design. At least till today, I have never seen a telescope that can perform well at two significantly different focal lenses. So, if you are interested in both nebulae and galaxies, I would say that's great, let's get two telescopes. Next, focal ratio. If you have the experience of shopping camera lenses, you should know how critical the focal ratio is. If f4 is economy class, f2.8 and below is definitely first class. Reason behind that is the aperture. Focal ratio equals to focal length divided by aperture. For example, my GT81 and Epsilon 180 have a similar focal length, both around 500mm. But Epsilon 180 
has an aperture twice as big as GT81. So its focal ratio f2.8 is half of GT81's f5.9. That means Epsilon 180 can collect light four times faster than GT81. When it comes to actually taking pictures, remember SNR we talked about last time, right? It's even more than four times because thermal noise on the camera grows with exposure time. Even my GT81 can spend four times of integration time to collect the same amount of light, but it also collects four times of thermal noises. So the SNR will be for sure less than my Epsilon 180 even with four times of exposure. Just think about how many moonless clear nights you have in a year and how rare or precious the time is under the stars. Then the natural conclusion is we should get the lowest possible focal ratio as low as we can afford. Sometimes focal reducers can help to get the focal ratio lower. And again, you better do some research to make sure it doesn't also reduce the image quality or flat field performance. Also about the focal ratio, there's one more thing that often get overlooked. That's the relation between focal ratio and camera's pixel size. We often see a specification of telescope called resolution. You might think this marks the optical quality of this telescope, but actually it's not. If you go to Wikipedia and search for angular resolution, you will get this Rayleigh's criteria formula. And if we do some calculations here, you can see the numbers on aperture and resolution matches exactly what's on the telescope specification. That means the resolution here is nothing but a theoretical limit calculated from the aperture. Nothing to do with the telescope's design, precision of manufacture, or even collimation. So that's actually a how good it can be rather than a how good it is statement. And if we transfer it from angular resolution into spatial resolution, introducing the focal lens, since focal length divided by aperture is the focal ratio, so spatial resolution is actually in direct correlation to the focal ratio. Let's say an ideal situation is that your camera's pixel size is exactly the same as the maximum spatial resolution of your telescope. Then no pixel is wasted, right? So here, the delta L equals to your camera's pixel size. Then you will find for a given pixel size, there is a maximum focal ratio. And that's as simple as your pixel size in microns multiplied by 1.5. How to use this? Let's say your camera's pixel size is 3.75 microns. Then your max focal ratio should be 5.6. If the actual focal ratio is higher than that, you will end up with some oversampling meaning the telescope's resolution is lower than camera resolution. So part of the camera's pixels are wasted, and the final image will look soft. Meanwhile, if you have a CCD camera whose pixel size is 7 microns, then your max focal ratio will be 10.5. Anything lower than that focal ratio will get you sharp images. Of course, as I said before, the telescope's resolution is just a theoretical number. And if you also consider that aspect, an even lower focal ratio than this max value will be plausible. All right, let's do a quick wrap up. Choosing a telescope is like choosing a house. Lots of things to consider. We discussed focal length and the focal ratio today. Focal length decides which type of objects we can shoot. I put them in three big categories, nebulae, galaxies, and planets. Focal ratio decides how much light we can collect on our sensors. Telescope with lower focal ratio is definitely better. At the same time, we need to be careful with the relation between focal ratio and our camera's pixel size to avoid oversampling or soft images. 
That's it for today. I'll see you soon on the second part of choosing telescopes for astrophotography. Thanks for watching. Take care and clear skies.